Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a special treat. Our next guest is the number three ranked welterweight in the UFC, currently riding an unbelievable eight-fight win streak going all the way back to 2016. This man is making his first appearance on the program. If anybody deserves a fight, it is him. Straight out of Birmingham, England, Leon Rocky Edwards joining us late at night over there in London. Welcome to Submission Radio. How are you, man? I'm very good, brother. That was a great intro. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved, man. And obviously, we got to kick it off with uh, the fact that you turned uh, 29 just a couple of weeks ago, man. I wanted to, first of uh, all, happy belated birthday. And also, how did you celebrate? How does one celebrate in this crazy world, these crazy times, the pandemic that we're uh, living in right now? What did you do? Um, nothing, really. Uh, I went with children, family, and like I said, there's not much to do during covid you know what i mean so everyone's already booked up and um yeah just chilled really for my birthday 29 still a vet i'm, I'm still a vet in the game so it's all good mm. well yeah casper was mentioning it i mean it's crazy times in the world right now and arguably you know even crazy times in the ufc's welterweight division we've been stalking your instagram leon we're going to admit it and we've seen you've been hard at work in the gym training non-stop so have you been keeping your sanity and also passing this time during you know such a t difficult and crazy time um, like I said, I'm, I'm back in the gym now. So in the UK, the gyms are back open. So, um, during COVID, uh, during lockdown, I kind of like bought like all the equipment for, <laughs> for the garage and I kind of like trained then. But now, like I said, the gyms are back open and I'm back in my martial arts gym, back to my coaches and my training partners. So, um, yeah, it's all good. It's kind of set me back to normal, you can say. So it's not too bad. What's, what, what's the one thing that you think you missed kind of the most or still miss the most? that you can't really do right now, you couldn't when everything was sort of locked down? Um, uh, that I can't do right now? Well, I'm not, not sure what, what the lockdown situation is over there. Over here in Victoria, we're still locked down, so we can't do anything. But over there, I, yeah, what, what, in, what's, in, what's in, the one thing that you miss? I can't do everything now, because it's kind of back open. Like I said, semi, the restaurants are back open, the bars, every, gyms, everything is back open, so. Like I was doing lockdown, everything was closed down, and I, I couldn't go to the gym, I couldn't go out, I couldn't socialize, you know what I mean? So, um, like I said, it's sent me back to normal now, so I've kind of done everything that I wanted to do um, during lockdown. Wow. It's it's great. Yeah, take us to where you are, Leon, where we got bloody curfew over here. It's also funny when you hear people, from, like fighters training out of the gym, it's like you hear about Rich Franklin back in the day learning, you know, jiu-jitsu or VHS tapes in his garage and stuff. And now yeah. it's like fighters temporarily had that. What were the garage workouts like for you? Yeah, so, same, right? Because um, my brother, I got a brother, right, that competes, he fights a better tour. Um, mm -hmm. Fabian, so he was coming, coming and training with me. In, in the garage doing like <laughs> like wrestling and pad work and lifting weights and <laughs> so it was all right for for what we needed it for you know what i mean so it was good yeah yeah well the brother as the training partner not, not a bad training partner at all so obviously exactly. we got to address the elephant in the room man i mean the the turn of events for you is actually quite crazy you can't write this stuff but it seems like you know since you were forced to withdraw from the Tyron Woodley fight back in March, you're always getting passed up over fights. And there's there's a lot of juicy fights for you. And for some reason, it's just not happening. And not for a lack of trying on your end, by the way. So for those who aren't aware, help us understand sort of your recent efforts in, in trying to land a fight. What are some of the things that you've been doing, you know, yourself to get a fight? Um, I mean, I've been on the UFC every day since March. You know I mean? To try and mm. get a fight booked in and just try... try Trying to get one of the name name guys that claim that they're 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 the best, you know. What I mean, um, I've proven my case. I'm on eight fight win streak now, the second most now to the current champion, you know. What I mean, so I feel I, I I deserve one of these top five guys, if not um a big name in the sport. And so yeah, I've I've been on the UFC now since March, trying to get a name in and trying trying to get a fight in. But it's always um it's, it was hard for me during lockdown because. Everyone else in top fifteen, they're based in the in the US, right? I'm I'm only one in top fifteen that's based in the UK, so it's way easier for for the UFC to match them guys up because they're based in in the states. And um, I couldn't travel because of visa issues, and obviously because you couldn't get get into America from the UK. And so it's been frustrating and it's, it's been annoying. But my time will come, and I'll, I'll be a world champion, and uh, I truly believe that. You know what I mean? So um, it's all good. Mm, well, that is a champion mindset. I'm just wondering, has the UFC actually offered you any fights since that 
Woodley fight unfortunately fell through? Um, well, not after the we in talks when when, when uh, remember they offered me the title shot right and like a week's notice or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, it was impossible for me to take because, like I said, there, there was no gyms that time. Everyone was closed and um, it was based on what you guys are doing now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Curfew. That's basically what I, what I had when I got the, when I got the call. It was impossible for me to for me to even consider doing it. And um, what else? That's it, really. And I know when when um, you remember Colby was meant to fight um, Woodley the first time, and mm-hmm. um, Woodley fell out. They yeah, had a conversation about that as well, about me stepping in and me me me, me competing then. And um, so yeah, we had a little bit of conversation. But nothing that like certain or like an official fight. You know what I mean? So it was like names or something like that. Mm. Uh, as far as the travel situation now and like visa and stuff like that what's the situation on your on your end um my understanding is you can travel from the uk now but would it be safe to say that you would have to fight in fight island right you probably wouldn't be able to go to the us um i think so i think so i got i got 100 fine fine abu dhabi um but as far as vegas goes i think um i'm trying to sign my visa right now for the for, for the US, but I, I think the US um, embassy over here is closed. That is closed. Um, so we're trying to find out some way where we can do it to get a visa, a work visa to get to the US and compete. Obviously, uh, a lot of stuff happening in the division. A lot of people having uh, different thoughts on it. Uh, just out of curiosity, Leon, I don't know if you saw it, but Chael Sonnen recently had some strong criticisms for you on his show. It wasn't about your skills, but he was talking about your promotion and marketing. And getting yeah. your name in the headlines. Uh, did you catch any of it? I just, I'm just wondering what your thoughts might have been on it. Yeah, I heard it. It's, it's, it's never about the skills, right? It's always about I need to, <laughs> I need to basically be a clown. And but it's not me. Like, I can't like put on like a maga hat and pretend like you know. I mean, it's not. I, I know what you're saying that I need to do more and for promotion wise because it's entertainment. It's entertainment business at the end of the day. And so I do understand where it's coming from, but. That that that's that was Chow, right? He talked his way into big opportunities back in the day and for Anderson Silver and people like that. So, um, is it is what you said? I, I, I didn't take much from it. I hear, I hear what you said, and um, but is it is? Mm. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you, Leon, and I feel like this is a sort of question and answer that will get different responses depending on the fighter, because like you said, I I don't see you, you know, coming out and all of a sudden, you know, you know creating this character out of thin air and then uh, you got fighters who are like well you know we're prize fighters we want to make as much money as possible and you get other guys who are like you know i'd rather take the quiet route and you know be be a world champion would you rather sort of be like a, a world champion and not be getting paid as much or would you be rather sort of like a prize fighter who maybe never fights for the title but you know end up a, a super rich man <laughs> in both yeah <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to be both. Yeah, I'll probably probably both. Uh, yeah, both. I don't really think about one or the other like that. I think if uh, if I keep doing what I'm doing, keep winning, and keep beating these guys, and um, or if it's missing, right, just one give me one one of these name guys that they think is 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 the best, right? Then I'll, I'll prove my case. Then um, everyone before let's say before George, I'm um, not talking Darren Till. Like, no, no one knew, knew, knew he was. You know what I mean? And so, this is what it is. Give me one of these guys, uh, and I'll prove, I'll prove my case. Mm. How, how likely is it that, um, that some of these guys are going to take a fight with you? Because I feel like you represent a really tough matchup, and I feel like it's one thing for yeah. the UFC to sort of say, all right, this is what we're targeting Leon, but I feel like the other the other issue might be guys actually accepting fights with you. How, how hard of a sort of issue is that for you? Um... Yeah, I think that's that, that's that's the annoying part because the, the UFC wants to fight, and it, like especially the George fight. And I, I knew you went to the UFC and said, "Oh, you won't fight me unless I got a title or, or 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 whatever." You know what I mean? But I believe that he needs to fight someone in top five to, to to get to a title, which is not doing so. Um, it's a frust- it's frustrating because the UFC wants it, I want it, but the other guys they they they're saying no, they don't want to fight because I'm a hard fight and they, they don't want to lose and. So, I don't know. It's funny that you mention that because now uh, it looks like Mars Vidal will be rematching Nate Diaz. And uh, there's no title involved in that one. So, if he wanted to fight for a title, you know, that excuse doesn't really apply. I'm just wondering, what do you think of the UFC going back and running that one back rather than capitalizing on this feud that you and him have and making that fight happen? 
Yeah, exactly. I think me and him is a big fight, you know what I mean? And I don't know, I don't know. Like the first fight when he fought Diaz, it, it was it basically batted him for the for the the three rounds that, 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 that was in the fight. So I don't understand where the selling point is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I just don't understand it. He went out there, he batted Diaz, and and that's it. Move on. But it, it's a weird situation. But let let them do the thing and fair play to him. Mm. Is it is it a fight that you'll be sort of keeping your eye on as far as you know? Because you guys looking for a fight. Is that one that you'll be sort of keeping your eye on as you know maybe versing? I don't know if I'd say the winner, but I guess Jorge Masvidal specifically. Yeah. Um. Not really. Like you said, he's come out and said he don't he don't he doesn't want none of the smoke with me. You know what I mean? You want you want to fight me for that world title. So I'm kind of over it now. He's, he's, he doesn't want to fight. So when, when I see him, we'll be on site fighting and um. He knows what it is when we we'll, we'll see each other, and so it is what it is. I'm not really like you, you cannot force a man into a fight, right? If he says they want mm. to fight, you can't. Nothing I can do to force him into it. I want it. The UFC want it. He keeps saying he doesn't want it. So, what more can I do? I guess the exciting. I don't, I know it's probably not going to happen, but the exciting thing about that fight being booked would be the anticipation of what a fight week would look like between you and Jorge Masvidal. I feel like every time you guys stay down, people would just be on the edge of this. Stay yeah, yeah, down. I was, I was slapping every time. I was slapping <laughs> every time we get close to staring down. So there'll, there'll, there'll probably be no stay down that fight week. So yeah, the whole time with madness fight week, whole time would be crazy. Wow, unbelievable! The other, the other big news, obviously, as well that the, uh, everybody's been putting out is the fact that Kamar Usman versus Gilbert Burns looks like it's going to be happening as well. Um, what was your reaction when you saw that Gilbert Burns is getting the title shot against Kamar Usman now? I was fucking, I was pissed off with when, when, when I seen it. He didn't beat nobody. Be a forty-six-year-old David Meyer, however old he is, and basically a lazy Woodley in the fight and. Now I was leapfrogging everyone to get to get a title shot. You know what I mean? So, um, it, it was annoying. It was frustrating, but like I said, uh, it is it is. I can't. I don't lose people, these guys, and what what they're doing. You know what I mean? Obviously, I, I feel I deserve the fight. I've proved my case time and time again, and I've done everything they've asked of me. I've fought everyone to put in front of me and beat everyone to put in front of me. So, um, I think the fans know who the, who the real number one contender is, and, and that's me. And I keep proving my case time and time again. Mm. Well, I know that when that Burns fight was announced, people were like, "All right, cool, that's a fun matchup." But a lot of people were like, "What about Leon Edwards? The guy's obviously on a bigger, bigger win streak." I'm just wondering, as far as like timeline return for you, what what do you think is sort of realistic? Because it, that is the big question with you: is when when are we going to yeah. see Leon fight? When are they going to actually match him up? And also with Burns, like that's in Fight Island, so theoretically they could have yeah. given that fight to you. So when when do you think we could see you fight next? Um, I'll, I'll be ready to go. I know. That we're- then at Fight Island until end of October, right? So probably um, one of them cards in, on Fight Island, if not early November in Vegas. So um, I'm ready to go late, late October, early, early November. Um, one of these, one of these name guys. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's so many great fights out there. Obviously, you'd go for the title shot if you got it. But if if the title shot is off the table, I mean, if you're looking at the winner of Covington, Woodley. A possibly, you know, a, a Masvidal fight. Is there a fight there for you that excites you the most outside of the title shot? Um, obviously the Masvidal fight. That's the fight that makes sense, right? That's the fight that everyone wants to see. The fans want to see it. Everyone wants it. So, um, the, the history that we got as well. I think that's the one that that will motivate me um, just as much as the title shot. So, that was Masvidal fight probably. It's funny because whenever anyone tries to um, address Colby Covington about you, he kind of blocks you out and. He likes to call you Leon Scott. I don't know if you've seen this in interviews, but he likes to refer to you as Leon Scott. What do you, what do you make of Colby sort of kind of refusing to even talk about you in interviews? He, he, he's just a weird man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. He's a, he's a weird, weird, weird man. You know what I mean? And um, uh, I, I don't like him one bit. And he's just a weird man. <laughs> I, I imagine like uh, if you face the winner of that fight, it could obviously you know be a big one in the division. Who do you think comes out on top between him and Woodley? Um, I don't know, right? Because the way Woodley's Wood been performing as late is is, is I don't know. I, I don't know where, where Woodley head is at. And I know he came out the other day and said like, now he's teamed up in muscle. Now he's got like a new energy and blah blah blah. And so let's see, let's see. I don't know. I probably I don't know. Probably Colby, probably. Going off the last his last two performances from Woodley, so 
Probably Colby's. Mm. Probably. I don't know if he's. I don't yeah. know if he's getting that rematch anytime soon. So he may. He may have to start addressing you pretty soon. You know, if the <laughs> UFC matchmakers are sort of eyeing you, you and Colby Covington. But we have to ask you, man. Um, I know. I know you retweeted it. Nick Diaz looks like he's set for a return. If if we're looking at big fights, if we're looking at you know maybe not a title shot. What, what do you think about a Nick Diaz fight? That fight would be fantastic. He's, he's, he's a big name in the sport. He's been, he's been around for for a long time, and so that fight would be fantastic. And um, it'd be better for him to come come if come in and beat me. I go on eight fight winning streak. That that would put him in 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 line for a title shot, right? So um, mm. I think I think it'd be a great a great fight, and to come and beat like the new guy. Um, which is made up and coming guy that's dominating everyone, beating everyone, and for him to come back and and um, challenge me and it would never beat me, but <laughs> <laughs> do, do, um, it, it's a good, it's a good fight, interesting fight, and that fight I 100% want 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 to compete against. Mm. Yes. How dangerous do you think Nick Diaz would be? You know, on on this return, I think that'd be one of the biggest questions as well because we know you're dangerous. How dangerous do you yeah. think Nick could be? Um, I think Nick Nick is Nick, right? Him and his brother is. is they're pretty much the same kind of technically just pretty much the same kind of fight the boxing base jiu-jitsu base um cardio based and that they kind of fight the same right so i think nick is nick and uh, he's, he's gonna the same it won't be nothing new he's gonna be the same the way the way to fight and that's just the way the 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 the, the body's designed to fight and where, where to compete and um i don't know i, I don't really look I don't, I don't know i know that if, if, if me and him compete i, I know i'll win and that's that's the main thing mm. do you feel like fights need a storyline i know one of the one of the things that people look at in this fight and say there's not much storyline between leon and nick i feel like you guys are very sort of um very sort of separate sort of as as people but do you feel i almost feel like at the same time you're owed a big fight you know if you can't get these guys that are sort of you know trying to fight for titles and stuff i feel like this one would be a great one for you do you feel like a, a fight needs a storyline um not really uh, really, look at they've done it time and time again with with big fights, and there's no sort of storyline behind it, right? So, I, I I I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Or look at boxing. Boxing do it all the time. Um, with two guys fight each other, there's no beef, and just a very good fight. You know what I mean? And it's a fight that makes sense um, for the sport. And um, so not really. I, I don't believe so. Mm. And obviously, there's a lot of great fights coming up um, in the UFC, Leon. We'd love to get your thoughts just quickly. A fight that yeah. we're really, really excited about is this Khabib Justin Gaethje fight, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it before we let you go quickly. What do you think goes down in a fight like that? I mean, who do you think comes out on top? Because people are pretty divided on this one. Many believe yeah. Justin Gaethje will be the guy to walk away as champion. Um, nah, I can't see that. I, I can. It's hard to pick against Khabib, right? From what he, what he's done in his career and how he's done it in his career. I think he's only lost like one round in, in his whole career, so. Um, I think it'd be a hard fight for him though. I don't think it'd be like a like an easy fight. Gaethje is, is wild. Is is um he's tough. He's got good cardio, good wrestling, good boxing. Um, so um, he's a good fight, but I think I think Khabib gets it done. Um, does what he does and gets it done. Okay, and just uh, one more prediction that we want to get from you is obviously Israel Adesanya versus Paulo Costa. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Very important for sort of our neck of the wood here as well with Israel, you know, representing the Australasian region. I wonder how you see that one going down. Um, I think Izzy, Izzy, I think Izzy gets it done. Costa's on good for like two, two rounds. Like it's dangerous for two, two or three rounds, but after that, it slows down and gases, right? Um, it'd be, it'd be a good fight. It'd be an entertaining fight. Um, but I think Izzy be too sharp for him, and it'll walk onto something, and is it easier get get a victory? All right, Leon. Well, as we wrap up, the most important uh, scenario in everybody's mind right now: the return of Leon Edwards. If you could sort of plan it out perfectly, give us the date and the opponent. If you could pick out of anyone, when would we, when would we see Leon Edwards return, and who against? Um, you see me return late fourth. Um, October, November, and any of these guys in the in the top five, um, in the top five or big name. Like I said, I've proved my case. Time I've done everything I needed to do to deserve a big fight, and so uh, give me any of them guys in the top five or a big name, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fight October or November. And there you go. And just to add to that, Leon, who do you think will be the champion when you eventually fight for the UFC title? Usman. I think. I think. I think Usman. I think Usman. I think Usman beats Burns and. 
I'll fight Usman early next year. Will that be the, the ideal one for you as well? Because then he gets to run that one back yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. The history behind it, right? He's the last guy to beat me in, what, 2016, you said? So, mm. um, that, like I said, it's a good storyline behind it. And I'll get to get my revenge back and get my get that win back on my belt. So, that, that'll be good. Well, we can't wait to see you back. Of course, follow the man at Leon underscore Edwards MMA on social media. And a lot of big things happening in this man's future. Can't wait to see who's next for you. Thank you so much for staying up and joining us on Submission Radio, Leon. It's an honor, man. Thank you, bro. It was a good interview. Thank you. Thanks, Leon. Bye.